Hey guys, welcome back. So I've been reacting to season four of Attack on Titan on my channel, and uh, yeah, so far the show has been really amazing. A lot of uh, world building, and we're definitely getting uh, a different side of things, viewing the story from the Malayans' point of view. So we just watched the Declaration of War, which was an amazing episode. Apparently, the Declaration of War hashtag was trending on Twitter, and people who are not familiar with Attack on Titan were freaking out. I mean, the the whole riots at the Capitol building had just happened, so. Twitter was in a little bit of a state of shock. But what I thought would be a fun thing to do today was just check out IGN's breakdown of that particular episode. There is a lot of information being dumped on us, so if you're not familiar with the manga and if you're a first-time watcher of the anime, it can be a little bit confusing and overwhelming just trying to piece all the pieces of the story together. Now, I have openly admitted that the first few episodes have confused me a bit with the changing of the studio. Mappa now doing the animation. There were subtle differences in the drawing style, and uh, yeah, I was a bit put off by some of the characterizations. I wasn't sure who was who. Eren, for instance, I wasn't sure who he was. And there was a couple time jumps which had me confused. So I was like, I, I need some kind of clarification. So this is the perfect opportunity to kind of get some clarity on the episode we just watched. I don't know if IGN's going to do this for every episode. If they do and, and I find it in time, I might do a reaction to these as well because every little nugget of information is only going to help, right? And besides, it's fun. I mean, it's an awesome show. Okay, let's have a look. Three, two, one. Go. And we're being hosted by... The first no, episode edited by Chris. After the holiday break and attack on Titan episode 64, Declaration of War, already marks a huge turning point for this season. Yeah. You haven't seen much of Aaron and the gang so far this season, no. so what have they been up to? Why does Aaron want to talk to Ryan us. now? And what's Willie Tiber's message to Marley and the other nations? Well, we'll get into yeah. that in just a bit. But before we do, we're about to dive right on into spoiler territory. So if you haven't seen Declaration of War just yet, avert your eyes and cover your watch. ears. Because here we go. You wouldn't watch a, uh, an episode breakdown without watching it first, right? I mean, come on. Okay, yeah, the whole Rhino right, Aaron conversation was amazing. Warning, Aaron just doesn't give a crap anymore yeah. and transforms into the Attack Titan in the same building as Falco and a bunch of other bystanders, immediately yep. grabbing Willie Tiber to eat him. Holy crap. Yes. Really Threw looks the real bad there at the end, too. Now, let's yep, back up, up to earlier in the episode, though. That brief scene with Reiner, Annie, and Baratold at the beginning. Calls back to episode 62, The Door of Hope, and Reiner's early childhood leading to the warrior's mission to infiltrate Paradise Island. Now, it references right. the old man that hung himself after telling Reiner and the gang about leaving his children to a titan. Baratold mentions that the old man probably wanted to be judged by someone, which leads us back to the room where Falco, Aaron, and a depressed Reiner meet to chat. Aaron tells Reiner that it's been four years since the Battle of Shinganshina District and probably the same amount of time since he got a haircut. I mean, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie though, Aaron looks mighty fresh with that long hair, man. Also, Falco is just too nice for this world and Jesus, doesn't realize how manipulative Aaron has been up to this particular point. Aaron convinced Falco to bring Reiner so that they could talk. Yeah. Come on, dude. Like, it's a little weird to bring a friend, one of the few special titans, to a small room for someone you barely know. Anyway, Aaron wants to chat with Poor Reiner Falco. using the tenants above as hostages. He even tells Falco to stay and listen. Now, it's probably because Aaron doesn't want anyone else to know that they're there, or he wants Falco to learn the truth as the next generation, or maybe it's both. Now, in the meantime, Wouldn't Lady Falco Kiyomi die? is seen leaving the area. Would it change? Now, she is most likely working with Aaron and the gang to infiltrate Marley, and she's safely distancing herself from the event. Now, very suspicious. Also, in case you might have missed it in episode 63, from one hand to another, Lady Kiyomi is the person young Udo spilled wine on. Ah. She saved him from possibly getting punished, showing that she could be an Eldian sympathizer. Now, back right. at the internment zone for the announcement, Reiner's mother runs into Annie Lionheart's father. As they talk about Baratold's death, Annie's father states that his daughter is not dead because she promised him. Well, well, he's not wrong. I mean, the, the last time we saw Annie, yeah, she was caught. encapsulated in that yeah. crystal thing that she created to shield herself. She's going to come Now, we haven't seen out. her in a long, long time, no. so we're curious to see if she has a role in the rest of this particular season. I want Annie the to come back. Season. 
As the announcement is about to begin, we see a mysterious soldier that leads the warriors away. He sends the Beast Titan to the gate while the Jaw and Cart Titans continue to follow him. Who he, is the that? The Cart Titan says that the soldier looks familiar. Could it be Armin because of the blonde hair? Well, Pete was there at the Battle of Shingenshina District and it definitely is not Erwin in front of them because y'all already know, RIP to Erwin. Now before they could find out, the soldier springs a pitfall trap on them, which is too small for the Titans to transform in is without hurting each other. Now during all of this, Willie Tiber is retelling the story of the great and Titan this was War amazing. that we learned through Aaron's father's memories, except for an interesting new fact. King Fritz saved the world by working yes. with the Tiber family to fabricate the Marlan hero Helos. He tricked the nations into peace. Through King yes. Fritz's vow of renouncing war, his ideology would be inherited by future generations of his bloodline. Yes. The founding Let's Titan go to war anyway. never be used for war. Enter Aaron Yeager. Having received the founding Titan through his father, Aaron holds its powers, but isn't beholden to the late King's vow of peace. As Willie Tiber says, there's a threat to our world, a rebel against peace. Now revealed as the enemy to the public, Aaron tells Falco and Reiner that he's been communicating with his comrades and living among the Marlans. Now he continues talking about how life in Marley is the same as those in Paradise Island, except the people of Marley were taught to fear the Eldian devils behind the walls. Aaron almost sympathizes with Reiner who was raised this way, but then Reiner confesses that he can doesn't give a with fuck. the attack that killed his mother. Aaron ends the conversation saying, I keep moving forward until I destroy my enemies. What's amazing about this moment is that Reiner said the same thing, the very same thing to Aaron back when he was in the training corps. <laughs> it all comes full circle. And it's mm -hmm. here that the attack Titan makes a grand entrance. Beautiful moment. Holy shit. What an episode. Next week's episode is titled The Warhammer Titan. We'll finally get to see mm, the God final damn. special Titan in the anime. Now, who will it be? Will Willie Tiber transform midair or will it be someone else in the Tiber family? And is Armin the mysterious soldier that we yeah. saw? I mean, he could have had a growth spurt in the last four years. You know, maybe being the colossal Shortcut. Titan makes him taller. I don't know. Anyway, let <laughs> us know what you're looking forward to in next week's episode and what your thoughts are on this week's episode. For more anime, check out our top 10 most anticipated anime of 2021 and our list of the fall oh, anime Dr. releases Stone. in case you might have missed them. And for everything else anime that. related, keep it right here. Mugen Train. Nice. So a few little subtle details. Um, if you've forgotten it, like I've not watched season three, well, like most of you, for a year. So all those specific episode titles with all the callbacks. So um, it's good to have these little little refreshes. Mostly because I've also got comments turned off, and I'm still kind of not sure if I, I should even have comments turned on for this one because that's just leaving an open door for people people to come along and um, spoil it just for fun. I mean. I split my time between anime and manga. There's, there's some shows I read the manga first and then react to, and then there's shows I do the anime first and then read the manga. So I'm fine either way. Just happened to be with Attack on Titan that the anime kind of became available to me first. It kind of inspired me to buy the books. So I'm strictly anime only at the moment. But those of us who are manga readers have the, the knowledge, and for some reason, some of them want to share it. And not just because they're excited, but because they're malicious about it. They just want to spoil our reactions and, um, yeah, lessen our enjoyment of the show for whatever reason. I mean, we all love it, right? So why would we do that to each other? It's confusing to me. It really is. But, yeah, so that was an amazing episode. Hope you enjoyed my little reaction. It was just nice to get some kind of refresher and some catch-up and to see another perspective. And, um, yeah, I'll take this on the end of my reaction to the show when I release it over on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, first, first dibs for Patreon, of course. So... That soldier could be Armin. I had no clue who it was. I was thinking maybe even Mikasa at one point, but I missed the blonde hair. So obviously, one of the, the major players who's got blonde hair is Armin. And, and I loved a lovely statement there. If he's the colossal titan now, maybe it's made him taller. Hilarious. Don't you think? That would, it's probably not the case, though. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Catch you in the next episode of Attack on Titan. Thanks for watching.